Welcome back, everyone. I've got an amazing guest for you here. We've got Danica Baldwin. She is one of the fortunate or unfortunate, however you uh, decide to to think about it, but souls that lives up in Alaska and gets to enjoy the beautiful untouched landscape uh, that is basically, we were talking about this beforehand, but a whole nother country in and of itself. Uh, there's so many things that, that I want to talk about about Alaska, but uh, Danica just is someone that loves to adventure. Uh, loves to get out and do things in the outdoors. And just some of her content caught my eye on Instagram as far as the adventures that you go on and that you love to bring people into the outdoors, which is something that for me is a big deal. I think more people need to do it, be inviting to people, have good mentors or be a good mentor, bringing people into the outdoors, whether that be fishing, hunting, simply hiking, backpacking, whatever it is. And you seem to be one of those people. So uh, just kind of a background before we even started this podcast that was really the first time we've ever really chatted so i don't yeah. know much about danica <laughs> other than she likes to get outdoors so uh who are you in a nutshell danica um so hello everyone my name is danica baldwin uh you may know me on instagram as girl in alaska um i have grew up in alaska since i was three years old i'm 35 so i've been here pretty much my entire life um, didn't always grow up in the outdoors. So kind of like you were saying, I think it's super important to um, teach people about the outdoors and encourage people to get outside and also, you know, just a little bit of inspiration and tips and help and all of that. So it's kind of my goal with Instagram. Um, so yeah, I grew up in uh, mainly Anchorage, which is where I live now. Um, but I spent the last nine years on the Kenai Peninsula in a very small little city called Soldatna. Um, and that's kind of where my page first started and where I really started getting into the outdoors. Um, Anchorage is a big city, if you've ever kind of looked it up or explored it at all. But um, so living, going from a bigger city, big city, <laughs> um, to a smaller city in Soldatna was a little bit of a culture shock. And I didn't know anyone. Um, I wasn't, like I said, I wasn't really into the outdoors. Um, started dating a guy who was a fishing and hunting guide and just really kind of immersed myself in everything he was doing and kind of his passions became my passions. Um, and so that's kind of where it really started for me as far as getting into the outdoors goes. Um, from all of that, since I didn't really know anyone, I was definitely using like social media a lot to um, talk to family and friends back home and things like that. And I actually started um, trying to get my private pilot's license. That's kind of where my Instagram page took off. Um, and so I started out as like this flying page on Instagram. And from that, I was sharing all of my experiences with hunting and fishing and flying. And, um, my ex at the time, he was a trapper. And so just tons of like really cool things that a lot of people usually don't get to see on social media. I started sharing that stuff. Um, and my page just kind of took off. I started doing reels and kind of humorous videos and helpful tips and tricks and started getting a ton of questions from people about just like Alaska in general and how we do things and how we live and, um, you know, how do I get outside? How do I start fishing? How do you make friends in Alaska and things like that? And that's kind of where my page started from and I've just been going from there so now my my goal with my page on Instagram is to just help you experience Alaska in any way that I can um, I work with a lot of local businesses and uh, tours and Airbnbs and lodges and things like that where I kind of go in and experience things for other people and give like my honest feedback and review and create content for these companies and kind of bring more brand awareness to their pages um, and then in addition to that, I do a little bit of travel planning for people that want to visit the state. So I had a bunch of people reach out, you know, how do we get to Alaska? I don't even know where to start. Um, and that's kind of where my travel planning business started. And then also I just started hosting um, group trips last year. I started with a all women's trip where I took a group of seven women around Alaska for a week. And we just did all the fun, like cool winter bucket list Alaska items that you can think of. I took everyone dog sledding and ice fishing and to an outdoor spa. And uh, we went winter king salmon fishing and just did all kinds of like fun stuff. So I did a couple trips last year. Um, and that's kind of everything I do right now in a nutshell. <laughs> That's that's a good that's a good uh that's that's a big nutshell. Big nut <laughs> 
<laughs> exactly. No, that's hilarious. Uh, but that is so cool that you just went all in on it. And, uh, you know, I, I, something that popped into my head when you first just started talking about kind of your background, how do you live in Alaska and not get immersed in the outdoors from a very young age, like maybe not necessarily full blown into hunting and all that, but I mean, you, yeah. I've got some amazing views here in Utah, but I can only imagine what it's like living in Alaska. So yeah. how, how did that not happen? So my family, my parents grew up in California. They were beach bums. You know, their parents didn't expose them to anything like that either. Mm. And they weren't hikers or hunters or anything like that. When we first moved to Alaska, um, we moved to a really small town called Hope. And, um, you know, my dad tried to get into fishing and things like that, kind of learning from the locals. Um, Alaska, there's a lot of kind people in Alaska, but there's also some people that, you know, don't want to give away their secrets or where their fishing holes are at or things like that. And it's definitely gotten more like that now. But back then, like, I think my parents just didn't really know how to get into it. And it wasn't wasn't a thing where like everyone was on social media and teaching and encouraging people to do stuff. You, I mean, you just literally had to ask your neighbor or the person, you know, mm. people that lived on your street. And so my parents just never really got into it, I guess. I wasn't really exposed to it growing up. Um, and then my, my parents divorced at a young age and my mom was a single mom and just working two jobs and things like that. I think she just never got into outdoor hobbies. And so, um, we never, my sister and I, we never really, I mean, we didn't even get into like sports or anything like that. Mm. Just my mom at the time couldn't afford it. Um, and so, yeah, that was our story growing up, but I definitely have a ton of friends that live here and were born and raised here and they're, you know, they've been hunting from a young age or hiking or doing stuff in the outdoors. So kind of just depends on where you came from, I guess. <laughs> yeah, no, a hundred percent. I I can definitely, uh, understand that. And it makes sense. I mean, you know, I say the same thing about here in Utah. There's people that live their whole lives here in Utah and never really get in the outdoors, which blows yeah. my mind because if you drive 10 minutes and there's so many different trailheads that you could go to and yeah. most of them are kid friendly. And, but you know, people get wrapped up in what they have to do in your mom's yeah. case, you know, where she had to take care of you kids. And that was her, she understood that was her responsibility. Mm -hmm. It can be hard to want to step away from, you know, what you have to do. Yeah. And, and get out and do that. So, so I can see that. Um, it just mm -hmm. still, it blows my mind. Like people think yeah. Alaska, you think cabins, hunting, fishing, and right. big mountains, you know, yeah. and big bears and big everything else. Yep. I think too, there's, you know, there's that in intimidation factor here too, that if you don't know what you're doing and you know, there are bear and moose that you have to look out for mm -hmm. when you go do outdoorsy things here and be really aware of your surroundings and things like that. Um, and so there's just that some people have that small amount of fear, like, well, I don't, you know, I don't want to get trampled by a moose or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then there's also that like intimidation and comparison factor. And I think that's really played a huge part in today's society is, you know, you see people fishing, catching these monster fish or, you know, they're out hunting and they're getting these giant moose and it kind of makes you feel like, well, gosh, I don't even know where to start. And I don't want to go fishing because I'm probably never going to catch a fish like that or something. But you're missing like the whole, the, the, the experience is why you're going out to do these things. You don't have to catch a big fish. You don't have to get a big moose, but the fact that you're getting outside and going camping for a week or going on these long hiking trips or, you know, getting out on the water and just enjoying like the, the scenery and your surroundings and things like that. I think that's the part too, that a lot of people miss and um, Instagram and social media, I think has played a huge factor in that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's definitely, it's unfortunate because there's so many people that don't get a chance to get out in the outdoors because of that idea mm -hmm. of comparison. And yep. comparison is definitely, it was the phrase, comparison is the thief of all joy. Yep. And it, it's so true because social media can be used for amazing things. Like for example, I would have never met you. I would have never known who you are if it wasn't for social media, but on the same aspect of, you know, other than creating friendships and getting to know people, uh, it can also be that, that thief of joy. If you're really comparing yeah. yourself to others. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I, I recently, I just barely got my first bull elk and I took the, the head in to get euroed. And the guy was telling me, he was like, man, there's this kid that came in 17 years old. He was like, this kid killed the biggest moose I've ever seen in my entire life on hoof or not. And yeah. he's asking me if it would score well. 
<laughs> didn't didn't talk about and he's like this is 17 year old kid that his dad's been putting him in for points and and we just kind of had a discussion it kind of struck home with me i'm like i can't imagine raising a child that way you know yeah. let alone all the other outside forces like you're saying with with social media uh yeah. playing a role in that in that pressure once in a, exactly it, those <laughs> once in a lifetime experiences or if you're going out and you're paying for the experience of getting the bigger animal, whatever it is, uh, is it's, it's not very often that that happens. And I think yeah. people need to understand, yes, love the experience, but also like have good mentors, you know, mm -hmm. and kind of going into that as well. You had someone that at the time you were dating, so you obviously, you trusted them. Uh, you, you enjoyed going outdoors and, and spending time with them. That's something that is, is huge. And you've taken a, a key role in, even more so women getting in the outdoors, which can be even more intimidating. It's mm -hmm. intimidating for anyone, but um, the fact that the two legged predators out there is what I, I like to call them. Like I, I pack heat when I go hunting for the two legged predators, not the yeah. other ones. Right. Uh, Cause you never know what you're going to run across, but you're taking a huge role in getting women outdoors in something that is, is a, a hugely, um, I guess, what's the word I'm looking for? It's overrun by, by males, by men in yeah. the industry, uh, just because of how it is. But I love seeing people like you getting women into the outdoors. So I guess what drove you to start doing that even more? Um, <clears throat> so I grew up with an older brother. He was four years older than me and I just, you know, wanted to be him basically. <laughs> Um, so I've always kind of considered myself like a girly girl, but also a tomboy. I like to dress up, dress down. I don't mind getting dirty. Um, and so I've always, I think it's, I've just always been interested in the things that like the guys typically do. Um, and so, you know, like when I first started trying to fly and stuff, I mean, the percentage of like female uh, pilots, especially private pilots is so low. And I've had so many, and in Alaska, it's really common here to like want to get your pilot's license and a lot of people on airplanes, but you know, it, the women factor is even less here. And, um, I've known a lot of women who have tried to get their license and gave up really quick and, um, fishing and hunting, all of those things. It's just, it's a male dominated, they're male dominated industries for sure. And so, um, that was always one of my goals was to just show girls like, look, I'm getting out here and doing it. It's not, it, I don't want to say it's not hard because it, there are things, especially with flying and things like that. It, it is challenging. It is tough to get your license, but it's not, you know, unobtainable or you can't not do it kind of thing. Like you still got to try um, because it is, it is once you do it, it's like the coolest thing ever. Um, and so, yeah, that's always been my thing is just trying to encourage women and ins inspire women to like get out and try the things that the guys do. And, um, that really, when you get messages like that from women that are like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. I want to try this or, you know, how do I do this or how do I get started? Those are like the best messages for me where I can kind of spill my knowledge and spill like, you know, how I did it because I didn't, you know, everything that I did, it wasn't just this like, walk in the park either. I mean, I went through my challenges and my struggles, especially with flying. There was a, there was a period where I was like, I don't think I can do this. It's really hard. I, I was trying to land an airplane by myself. I was like, I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> but it just like, you know, I kept trying and one day it just like clicked. And when it did, it was, I mean, I just took off and, it, and I got my license. And so you really just have to, like I said, like not compare yourself to other others, not compare your journey to everyone else and just get out there and try it, um, especially us women. So, yeah, I, I love encouraging women to get outside. It's definitely my thing. Yeah, no, for sure. And, and you know, the I, I've mentioned this, too, that the the mountains can be overwhelming uh, for anyone. And, you know, mm -hmm. coming from the East Coast out to the West Coast. And living right here on the Wasatch Front and looking at those mountains for a while, I like I missed getting outdoors, but I also didn't know where to start. And I I wouldn't be where I'm at if it hadn't been for now my best friend. But at the time, mm -hmm. a guy just saying, sure, you can come on a hunt with me. That's um, awesome. 
and I fell in love with the the West because of that. And I, and it it's like you look at these mountains and and Alaska is the same way. You know, you look at the ocean that you have and and the mountains and and the woods and the thick brush and everything else. Not to mention all the wonderful podcasts that come out about horror stories coming out of Alaska. You know? <laughs> all of those things combined uh, can, can be intimidating for sure. And so having someone that's trusted, um, is, is a, is a huge deal yeah. Someone that you can go out and whatever adventure it is you want to go on. Uh, mm-hmm. flying is something that I like my feet on the ground. So I don't, I personally don't even know if I'm ever <laughs> going to go and do that. My son's got a, he's got his commercial license okay. and, uh, and, and so he just barely got that. And I still haven't gone up and flown with him because I, <laughs> I mean- it's just, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> but uh no, that that's really awesome. Uh, to be to be just frank about it. It's something that is lacking because you don't have to give up your 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 favorite honey holes and all these other things to still be helpful yeah. in encouraging other people to get outdoors. Yeah. Uh, and I I personally don't understand the population that gets upset about adult onset hunters, fishermen, I'm sure the same way, clogging up their fishing holes, things like that. Yeah. Uh, and and I, I don't understand that because it's the people that are being drawn to the outdoors that are going to continue to help with conservation, mm-hmm. to push for the efforts to to keep our rights, you know, as hunters, fishermen, outdoorsmen. Uh, it, I just, I don't understand that mindset. And from someone like, like yourself that got into it at a later age as well, um, you're being a huge force for good in, in the outdoors that would have never happened if you hadn't taken the leap of faith and trusted someone to take you outdoors. And now you're all in on it, you know? Yeah. 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 And that is, I would say that is one upside to social media too is you know you can join groups now on facebook of interest and things like that and especially here in alaska there's a lot of like hiking communities and outdoor women alliances and just things that you can join or you know you start following a person online and you're like oh my gosh we live in the same town we i mean i look like i could be a friend with that person and then you reach out to them and now you're hanging out um so there i've met i've Honestly, most of my closest friends now I've met on Instagram and we're like, hey, let's go hiking next week. And I love to see, you know, I see that you love to hike or, you know, I've got an open seat on the boat. Would you ever, are you interested in coming fishing? Um, so that's been a, a plus for, you know, social media for me and getting to know people and encouraging more people to go outside. And me too, like I've joined a lot of groups and outdoor women groups and things like that, that I would have never even known existed had it not been for social media. So, um, that's been really nice. And if you are looking to get outside and are looking to, you know, hang out with other women, I would encourage people to do that is to join those Facebook groups and, and things like that online. Yeah, no, for sure. Uh, what's a, um, I guess g- give us kind of a, your first experience in the outdoors that really struck you as I can do this. And I really want to make this a bigger portion of my life. What, what's a, you know, your first moment that really clicked with you that you wanted to make this a bigger part of your life? Um, I would, I've had a couple moments and it's all, it's like, I had a hiking moment. I've had a fishing moment and I've had a flying moment. Um, you know, one time I went hiking and I went solo and I brought my own bear spray and all my own, you know, everything. And I went on my own and I was kind of like, okay, I can do this. I don't, cause there was a point in time where I was like, no one wanted to come hiking or everyone was busy. It was kind of when I, I quit my full-time job to pursue social media online. I was trying to explore a lot and get content and things like that. And, um, just taking that leap of faith and being like, you know what, I'm just going to go on this hike by myself. Like who cares? I'll, you know, I'll go by myself. I'll make sure I have everything that I need. And if something happens, so be it. But like, I took all the necessary precautions and I'm, but I'm also like, not going to let it stop me from going out because no one else wants to go with me. Um, so just learning to like adventure on my own was a huge, huge thing. Um, and then fishing one time I went with just me and a girlfriend and it was just, we had a blast. Like, you know, we're tying all our own knots. We got bait. We, went out at midnight when the river opened and we caught 
I don't know, three sockeye salmon each and fillet them on our own. And it was just our, you know, my first time fishing by myself with a girlfriend. And that was really like empowering, just knowing that like we could do that on our own. This was after I stopped dating the fishing guide. So I was like, see, I can do this without him. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, I've had a couple, couple like aha moments where I'm like, you got this. You can do this on your own. <laughs> Perfect. No, that's awesome. Yeah, it's it, it's it's good to have a culmination of all of them. It's not just one particular yeah. event, but that that's really cool. And it, it is good to see like when your your mentor per se uh, in this instance wasn't there, and you still did it and did it well. You're like, oh, okay, all right, and yeah, you know, it, yeah, you and keep you those friendships. Oh, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, maybe, you know, we might have not filleted that fish perfectly or, you know what I mean? Like little things, but the the whole point of everything was getting out and, and going out and experiencing it and doing it on our own. And we did it and we accomplished it and it, and it made us feel good. So, yeah, yeah it might have not been perfect. And since then, I mean, that girlfriend and I, we go fishing all the time by ourselves now. And it's just like second nature to us, like what we do now. So that's awesome. That's awesome. So I, and I, I didn't dive into this enough. Do you do hunting as well? Or is it mainly fishing, backpacking and adventure style? I would say hunting. I mean, I've gone on several hunting trips. I've shot a moose before, um, shot some like smaller game, but I, out of everything, that's probably what I, what I, I don't want to say what I least know about. Cause I do know quite a bit about hunting, but it, it's something that I probably wouldn't do on my own just yet. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely more into like fishing on my own and hiking and exploring. And I've kind of made it my mission, um, in the last few years to, we were talking about this before we started, but really like exploring Alaska and seeing different parts of Alaska. Cause Alaska is such a huge state. Um, a lot of people, you know, they stay in their bubble and they don't really get out and see all of Alaska. And, and so that, that's really what I'm trying to do right now too, is see different parts of Alaska and, go to different cities and experience what it's like, you know, to be in those places. Cause they're all so different. Um, you would think that everywhere in Alaska looks the same and is the same, but it's not there. There's a, you know, there's different scenery and different, um, things to do and stuff like that. So more so on the like exploring and, and adventuring side than hunting, I would say right now on my own. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And, uh, I, I can definitely understand that one. Um, packing out a moose an Alaskan moose is uh that would definitely be something you don't want to do by yourself <laughs> I however um so my the guy that I'm currently dating he's a big bow hunter um so I just got my first compound bow it actually just came in last week um and so I'm excited to kind of learn more about bow hunting and get into that we're gonna go to Arizona in January and do a mule deer hunt so that'll be my next big hunting adventure. Not in Alaska, though. <laughs> yeah, no, that that's awesome. So, uh, so you're gonna start a page girl in Arizona? No, okay. yeah. <laughs> no, but the 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 idea of bow hunting is, and that's definitely something that that's a whole nother uh, level of. You know, you have to learn a whole bunch of other things, such as yeah. you got to learn your wind a lot more than you do with a rifle. Um, you need to know, you know, concealment. Uh, what they're looking for, you know, tons of different things. And along with the fact that you have to get within such a close range to be able to get uh, a deer or an elk or a moose or whatever it is that you're, you're going after. And um, I guess what drew you to, other than the fact that you're dating a guy that's into bow hunting, what drew you to archery uh, outside of that fact? I think just, it's a new challenge for me. It's something I've never done before. Um, I, you know, I can see how tough it is. I, I went and like, we, I shot my first bow, like picking out a bow and, um, I could barely pull the damn string back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's a lot harder than it looks. And oh, yeah. so, yeah, I'm just excited for the challenge. I'm excited to learn something new and I'm definitely a person who's like, I'm not, I don't consider myself like a pro at anything, but I will try everything. I, I like trying new things and having new experiences. And um, so, yeah, I'm just kind of along for the ride and I'm excited to learn more and kind of test things out in January and test out my knowledge and what I've been practicing, and what I've learned. So I'm just kind of 
ready for a new challenge basically <laughs> there you go awesome uh, what uh what bow did you end up going with um i got a prima matthews prima there you go that's a good bow for sure i 100%. love it and yeah. uh you're pulling the the 90 100 pounds <laughs> i'm pulling right now <laughs> and you're like whatever i could pull is what yeah and that that's the other thing too is uh it, i guess when you went through your process kind of walk us through that for someone who uh is maybe getting into it maybe yeah. again you had someone that well i guess i should ask did your boyfriend go with you to the shop or did you go by yourself to the bow shop yeah no we went together um so there's a couple different smaller like local archery shops that we have here in anchorage um he's actually really good friends with one of the owners of it's called full curl archery um and so we went in and the owner was very helpful he brought me several different bows i think i tried out like four or five of them um and just you know had me shoot each one at a pretty close distance to the target it wasn't very far or anything like that taught me you know the proper stance and how to hold the release and everything and how to make sure i don't get my hair ripped out um i snap myself one time I got a little love bite my first <laughs> first one um but yeah it was a I really enjoyed the experience he was very helpful and that was kind of the the initial visit was just finding a bow that feels comfortable for you and th there are I mean they all look very similar for someone who's never bow hunted before um but you once you you know are drawing them and everything it, there's definitely a difference you can tell a difference and some of them I was like I don't like this at all. I just didn't like the way it felt. I couldn't pull back far enough. Um, so yeah, so that was good. I highly recommend if you are going to buy a bow, like go in, try them out, feel the weight, you know, draw each one. And uh, yeah, that was, that was huge. I'm glad that I went and did that. And then we ordered it because they didn't have the color I wanted. So it took like four weeks to come in. And then tomorrow we're actually going to go in and get it all set up and I'll practice shooting it again. And um, maybe get a case for it and all the other little accessories that come with bow hunting, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which I have little accessories. <laughs> There's a lot yeah. of accessories. <laughs> well, I'm like uh, looking in the shop and I'm like, okay, there's a lot of things you can buy for your bow in here. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh yeah. A lot of, a lot of things you can buy, a lot of needs and, uh, and then yeah. needs, right? Yeah. you know, there, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff, but that's really cool that, that your shop didn't try and push. And I think most good shops will not try and push you in one direction or another. They'll do what you said, where they walk you through. Obviously you're close to the target because what you're wanting to do at first is figure out what feels best, what looks best, right? You want it to feel good. You want it to look good. And I'm glad you didn't just buy whatever was on the shelf necessarily because uh, you wanted a certain color. You had an idea. This was going to be a, a long-term investment for you. And yeah. uh, you, you wanted to look good, right? Mm -hmm. I, I feel like a lot of people don't talk about that enough. You want to be, you want to look at that thing and say, man, I'm, that's cool. Every time yeah. you, you, you look at it, right. Uh, just like you do a vehicle or a rifle or a pistol, whatever it is. Uh, I'm not big into fishing, but I'm sure people look at their rods the same way um, where they, they like the reel and they like their setup, but you want to get it the way that you, you want it and that you'll be proud mm -hmm. of it. Uh, yeah. And then, and then going back in and getting it set up is going to be awesome. So yeah. I, I jokingly bring up the, the poundage of the bow. Cause that's something that too, I'm, I laugh at because uh, I never really, unless people ask me about my setup, I don't ever really like post about what the poundage is. And I think the other day someone asked me in a comment or whatever, and I said it and they're like, wait, you shoot what? And I was like, well, it doesn't matter. What matters is I made a clean shot on an animal, not I yeah, could be shooting 40 right. pounds as long as yeah. you got it done. That's all that matters. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, again, that comparison thing, it's like, it doesn't, it, it doesn't matter as long as you enjoyed it. As long as you had a good time, you like the way your bow looks, who cares what other people think you yeah. like the way it feels and you had a good experience, which I'm sure you will down in Arizona. That's, that's yeah. some good hunting from what I understand. So yeah. that's that cool. Yeah, um, and it's a big investment too. So like hmm. you said, making sure that you get what you want too. if you're going to, I mean, I plan on using that for a long time. And so just making sure that I get, get the right thing. And one thing that we preach really big about too, in Alaska is like having good gear. Mm -hmm. um, don't cheap out on your gear when it comes to anything like hunting, fishing, hiking, any of that stuff, because it's, 
the weather here can really take a toll on your gear as well. And so just making sure that you are investing in good gear is huge here. And it's something that we live by. So. Yeah, exactly. And, and testing it as best as you can. Obviously you can't test it in every single environment. I'd say Alaska has a good range of environments that you can test it in, but yeah. uh, you know, there, there's a, a video out that it was up in Alaska. They were brown bear hunting with a rifle and they'd spent some good money on this rifle, but they hadn't tested it in this like sub freezing temperatures. Mm -hmm. And because it was a custom rifle, it was fitted super tight. And so when they fired the first shot, which they had, a, it was an amazing shot, but this brown mm -hmm. bear, I think he measured out over 10 feet and a uh, big old, big old animal. And they couldn't chamber another round because the combustion of the round going off created that expansion and then it froze and they couldn't eject the round and put yeah. one in and that's stuff that people don't think about but uh yeah getting out and testing your, your gear you yeah. won't have that problem with a bow but uh <laughs> yeah those are my yeah. friends from that video okay yeah so you know which one i'm talking about yeah, the Grenda. oh my goodness that yeah oh. mm. Mm -mm. that just every time i think about it, it just gives me <laughs> goosebumps <laughs> yeah yeah, because uh, and people that don't know about this video, um, I, I, I've i chatted with Stuck in the Rut. I can't remember his name, um, but I, on social media, it's Stuck in the Rut. And isn't his like brother-in-law or something like that? Sister, brother-in-law? Yeah, Adam and Tana live here in Alaska. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so they, they went out and they were going brown bear hunting. They were alone on the mountain and they had this really nice custom rifle, which, I mean, the custom rifles are not cheap. So they obviously did not cheap out on their gear, but they were out in these sub freezing temperatures and they thumped this black or this brown bear at like, I think it was like 500 yards, something like that. And um, it was a great shot. You could see him coughing up blood and everything. Uh, but he just, I mean, they're, it's a brown bear. Yeah. You know? And it was a solid round too. It wasn't some little 22. It was a, it was, they had everything right. And uh, this brown bear just turned around and he sees that they're the only two moving things on the mountain. And he's taking all of his rage out on whatever's alive on that mountain. You can just see it and makes his way down to him. And anyway, I recommend people go and check that out if you're looking to go into brown yeah. bear hunting. because. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> and they've, they've been hunting since they were small children and they mm -hmm. that's never happened to them before. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Then they end up having to finish it with a, uh, his revolver. What was, yes. Yep. Yep. Having good gear, but also having backup gear and knowing how to use your gear is super important. <laughs> yeah. yeah, seriously though. Uh, but yeah, especially out there in Alaska where they're not going to come find you for a while. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so awesome. So you're getting into bow hunting. Uh, you love fishing. What's your favorite fish to go after? Do you target fish specifically or do you just kind of go out and do what I do where you're just like, hey, I caught something? Yeah. So we have um, different fishing seasons here that I like to go after. Um, you know, in we get a couple, we get two runs of sockeye salmon. So I like to go out and fish when those are in. Um, we get king salmon kind of in like June, July. Um, I like to go for those. And then also silver salmon. So I'm a big like salmon fisherman. We do silver salmon in the fall. Um, we actually might go next weekend and try and get a couple before the season ends and before the rivers start to freeze up. Um, and then I recently, with my new boyfriend, have gotten into fly fishing. So um, that's something that I just never really got into. It's a whole nother ball game. Um, <laughs> it's challenging. Um, mm -hmm. I, uh, yeah, we we did a, a lot of fly fishing this fall actually, and went out for rainbow trout and Dolly Varden and things like that. Um, went steelhead fishing for my first time recently, and we took my boyfriend's parents, and they're a little older. And I had a really nice steelhead on, first one I've ever 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 hooked into. And I'm like, get the net, get the net. And my boyfriend's parents were walking real slow. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> the net to me in time. I mean, I had it on for like five minutes and then it broke off and like my heart was broken. <laughs> I bet. Dang it. So, yeah, we, um, I loved salmon fish, getting into fly fishing. And then I also like to get on the ocean a couple times a year and go halibut fishing, get rockfish, lingcod. 
Um, we can get king salmon on in the ocean as well. So anything I can really get my hands on, I love to go fishing. I, I, I love to go for the experience and just to be with people and have fun. And um, filling the freezer is also very nice and knowing where our food comes from. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So, yeah, yeah, I love to fish. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, man, I, I've never been steelhead fishing and you're picking up some expensive hobbies. Uh, I know with this with this boyfriend right. <laughs> the, uh, bow hunting and fly fishing is uh they are so I've dabbled in fly fishing a little bit, but I definitely went the cheaper route and got the cheap rod and all this stuff but uh man, some of the things like i I've talked to people that tie their own flies um they have like multiple rods that are probably at least a thousand dollars a piece yeah. um they weigh like nothing, and they can drop this fly into a spot that big around wherever they want on the river and it just blows my mind i'm like yeah i'll do that with a bow i i can't do the over like i just wherever that fly ends up landing hopefully there's a fish there like <laughs> Same. that's it yeah. yeah uh but that that's awesome yeah fly fishing is um i, I like the uh the activity of it and and with with regular fishing even uh bass fishing and such I like topwater fishing because you can see the interaction of the fish with the bait and it's more active. You're reeling, casting, reeling, casting, same with yeah. the fly, fly rod. You're casting it out, bringing it in, casting it out again. Yeah. Um, I, I like that a lot more than just sitting the typical where I grew up. It was, you know, kind of a cane pole with a bobber. You just kind of sit yeah. there, which is fun sometimes, but it's a lot more fun to be, be more interactive with the fish itself. It is. And it's, it's interest and it's fun, you know, testing out different beads and different flies and like seeing, you know, what's biting at that time. And then, and then just knowing like, okay, cool. I picked a good color or something. Oh, there's a, and there's an art to it, which I, I, I believed in it, but never really had seen it until we went out. Uh, it was like two months ago and we were camping. My son and I were fishing. He had the bobber. Um, and then I had the fly rod and we're just off the side of this, uh, this lake. And this guy comes around and he kept pulling out fish. Like it was, I mean, I swear he would hook them on and pretend like he was catching them. But like he was, every time he'd cast in, he was catching something. Really? And, uh, oh, it was ridiculous. And he was in one of those little float tubes that had the, and he had the little flippers and he was just floating around with his waders on and he'd cast, oh. catch one, cast, catch one. I'm like, what are you doing? He comes over. And he's working his way towards us. And I haven't caught anything at this point. I've watched him pull out over 12 fish and he works his way over to us. And I'm still casting over, um, didn't catch anything. He cast like 10 feet from where I was, pulled one up. I'm like, I just kind of look at him. <laughs> I just watch him like unhook. And then he casts again, almost right where I was. Cause I, at that point I was done. I was just going to watch him. And, uh, and he casts and he caught one and I'm like, I, dude they were biting all around my fly except for my fly and they yeah. get on his and he was like yeah and he was showing me he was like i had this pink and green combination he said i tried something else they weren't biting and now this pink and green one for some reason is like on fire today like, wow well i don't have a pink and green one so i'm done fishing <laughs> <laughs> but uh they can get picky it's interesting to, to watch the fish you would think that fish aren't picky but uh yeah. they, they can be for yep. sure and here it it changes too as the season changes and as the weather gets colder and as the current gets you know faster and so it's it's like different every day too you just have yeah. to try and see what works exactly exactly so yeah don't don't be afraid to try new and different things yeah. don't get frustrated like me and just throw your rod in the lake no, okay. <laughs> but uh um so let, let's talk a little bit more about this uh getting into the outdoors kind of the whole thing that you do obviously you're not all over the US so for people that, that do want to get in the outdoors, are new to it, um, and for women specifically, uh, what do you recommend? Or even, I guess, let me, let me say this, because a lot of my listeners are men uh, that listen to the podcast, and a lot of them are between, I guess, the, the statistics are showing me between 25 and 35-ish is my main audience, right? And so a lot of them are married, I imagine, uh, and they want to get their women into the outdoors, their wives into the outdoors. What can you recommend if maybe, hmm, how do I put this? Uh, I mean, you've been in relationships, you are in a relationship. You understand that sometimes you don't 
want to go out with your spouse. Like that's just <laughs> something that the wife doesn't want to learn from the guy or the guy doesn't want to learn from, from, from the girl. Um, what would you recommend to the men to get their women interested in these outdoors adventures? Yeah. Um, I would definitely say look to social media and find some type of group or some type of retreat that maybe you could send your spouse or significant other on. I mean, how many like fun hunting trips and fishing trips do you guys usually go on a year and the women, you know, may or may not necessarily always join you or maybe they're not going out on their own female hunting trips or things like that. But you know, one thing that I did too, when I got out of that relationship with the hunting and fishing guide, I, there was a point where I got a little scared, like, how am I going to do this stuff on my own or without him? And so I took it upon myself to join a couple different things. So I went on a, it was a women's wilderness outdoor retreat. And we went for a week and got dropped off in remote Alaska and Katmai National Park. And we camped and you know fished and and did a little bit of like um outdoor like wilderness survival training and things like that we did this long uh hike together and it was me and a couple other girls from alaska but the majority of the people were not from alaska and so um it was just really fun to like meet other women from other parts of the world and other parts of the country and things like that and um, the group setting was awesome and just being with other women who may not be as experienced in the outdoors, it made it like less intimidating and you kind of feel like, okay, these are like, these are my people. We're all kind of like at the same, um, level or stage in life right now where it's like, we are all interested in the outdoors, but maybe we just don't know where to start or how to get out there or, or how to get out there or who to get out there with. Um, so doing something like that, like a fun outdoor women's retreat or a women's hunt or something like that, uh, would be really cool that you could send your spouse or, you know, your significant other on. Um, and then, like I said, just joining those Facebook groups is really important. Um, look for those groups that are in your specific area. Um, there's, I'm sure there's some type of, you know, women's group everywhere at this point where everyone lives, some type of group online that you could join or get more involved in. Um, and then I also, in addition to the outdoor women's, uh, retreat that I went on, I signed up for a female hunt in Hawaii. It was for Axis deer. And unfortunately I didn't get to go on that hunt. I ended up having to have hip surgery. This was last, uh, winter. Um, but all the women that did go on it, I mean, it just looked like a blast and it was a all girls hunt and they each got a access to your, so, you know, it costs money, but you're really like investing in yourself when you do something like that. And it's totally worth every penny. Um, the thing that I went on the women's wilderness retreat, it was truly like life changing. I, I do really honestly think that, and, um, I learned a lot on that trip, so doing something like that and just really investing in yourself and, and, um, putting in the time and the money to do something like that is huge. Yeah, no, I definitely agree with that. And, and, uh, unfortunately not, not every woman's going to be interested in the outdoors. So, uh, also to the men out there, don't get frustrated if your wife doesn't want to do any of those things, but I, I do want to say, um, and this is something I'm constantly working on getting better at myself, but when, your wife or your girlfriend or whoever brings up a specific something that they're interested in, uh, at least, even if you're not interested in it, at least pretend that you're interested in it. Hear them out. Yeah, mm -hmm. totally. Yeah. Because there's, there's things that like, for example, my wife, um, she'll bring up in a trip that she wants to go on. I'm like, go for it. Like I, there's no, I don't even ask details until after I've said, go do it because yeah us as uh, you know i know me personally i'm like okay i, I kind of want to know like it's interesting because i'm like i want to know all about this trip to make sure that you're safe or you and our daughters that you're taking are safe and that's not really what the girlfriend or wife wants to hear they just want to know that you are supporting them totally, yeah and of course the other conversation can come about but like my wife went to peru on a sister's trip I still haven't been to Peru, but guess what? Her going to Peru, let me go on my elk trips, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> so there, there's definitely those trade-offs. Uh, but I, I, I highly recommend that people do what Danica is saying and, and go out 
and find what your wife's passionate about. And if you want her to get into the outdoors, find ways to make it enjoyable for her. Maybe she doesn't want to go on these big adventures, but even just going camping. Uh, I know certain things about my wife. She won't go camping in certain areas because of certain things. I don't even push the issue, you know? Uh, So there's just things like that just to pay attention for. But um, do you have any groups specifically that you recommend? Obviously you've got your own group. So if people want to go up to Alaska and do things like that, do you have trips outside of Alaska that you do or like what, I guess, give us a rundown on that. I've never, no, I haven't ever done anything outside of Alaska specifically that, that Hawaii hunt was going to be my first kind of outside of Alaska thing. Um, I am totally open though, to doing things outside of Alaska. Like I, you know, like I said, I'm not as experienced in hunting per se, but that's, that's where I would pay money to join a group so that I could still do stuff like that. Um, and, and feel comfortable and safe in doing it kind of on my own, but also with a group of people. So it just felt safer. Um, so no, I haven't specifically done that, but I'm not opposed to it. And I'm sure Mm -hmm. later on down the road, I'll be doing something like that. Cool. Awesome. So, So, and then for people that maybe want to connect with you and get to know, cause you do, I mean, you're putting together these group trips yourself. So if they do want to go up to Alaska, uh, or even just kind of pick your brain. Um, do you have a site other than Instagram or would you prefer Instagram? How, how do you prefer they reach out to you? Yeah. So a lot of what I do can be found on Instagram. I'm specifically on that platform. I don't really use Facebook or TikTok, um, but I also have a website. It's girlinalaska.com. And I've got all, you know, usually my group trips are on there and the travel planning help and things like that. And you can send me a DM or send me an email either way. Um, my phone number's on Google. Like I, I mean, I've got all my info out there. So if you need me help or you have any questions about Alaska specifically, yeah, just send me a message. Let me know. I would love to help. Um, I'd love to help you either come to Alaska or if you live in Alaska, get out there and start exploring on your own. Perfect. No, I I love that. And honestly, um, there's so many, this happens in, in not just for women, men do the same thing, but there's so many women out there that are grabbing attention through use of, I mean, for lack of better words, using their body to get attention in the outdoor space. Yeah. And I will say that you, and there's a couple of other guests that I've had on, you're just, you're a very genuine person and you really enjoy getting outdoors. You're not doing it for the likes. Like you said, you're not on TikTok, really, not on Facebook. You're doing it to help people. You're doing it for your own journey and sharing your own journey, but you're doing it so that you can help other people get outdoors as well, which is, that is huge. Again, that genuineness, it, it shows. Uh, people will sniff out the BS, and, uh, and, and when you're genuine, it's just something that, that stands out. You know, and I think that, you know, you were saying that you're, your brand has kind of has grown a lot. And I think that's the reason why is that people recognize, Hey, she genuinely wants people to get outdoors and and to get better. You may not, you don't portray yourself as the perfect fisherman or the perfect outdoors woman, but just sharing your journey. And that, that's, that's a huge deal. Um, and I think that brings a lot of people to you for sure. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. Is there anything else that you want to share with the audience or, uh, anything else you want to say? Nothing that I can think of. I, I really enjoyed talking with you and talking about the outdoors and, and yeah, I, I appreciate you having me on the show. Of course. And good luck with your hunt down in Arizona hey. in January. Yes. I'm not sure when this is going to come out, uh, to be honest with you, but hopefully uh, we'll get to it before January. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, with that being said, guys, if you want to check out any of Danica's stuff, I'm going to leave her links down below. Uh, definitely reach out to her. She is someone that really wants you to uh, really wants to use her resources to help you get better and uh, to enjoy the outdoors. So with that being said, Danica, thanks so much for being on. I really appreciate you being on the podcast and taking your Thank time you. out of your busy day and schedule uh, fly fishing and everything else you got going on <laughs> to come on the podcast. And uh, with that being said, guys, like I always say, get out of your life and love it. Bye, guys. <laughs>